courts of heaven. The courts of heaven. You'll be, you do well to listen carefully. And this is a very, very serious situation. And something you need to deeply understand. When we talk about prayer, there are eight dimensions of prayer. Eight dimensions of prayer. Eight dimensions of prayer approaches. Eight dimensions of prayer approaches. The first one, you approach the Father as a friend. In John chapter 15, verse 14. John 15, 14. You approach God as a friend. And when you approach a friend, it's different from just approaching anybody. It's different from approaching one top man somewhere, the way you talk to your friend. So when you approach God as a friend, both of you can sit down and talk and have a conversation, a discussion. It's the first approach to prayer. John chapter 15, verse 14. Ye are my friends. If ye do whatever I command you. When you obey God's command 100%, you become his friend. That's why God is, was calling people like Abraham my friend. He spoke to God as friend because he obeyed 100%. 95% obedience to God is equal to disobedience. 100% obedience guarantees your friendship with God. Oh, so God is not talking to you like a friend. Or you can't talk to him like a friend. Then, check your gauge of obedience. Obedience. God hates disobedience. Hatred. In fact, God takes you who disobey God as a witch. So that's why the first witch in the Bible is Adam. It's not those ones who are flying about. Adam was the first witch. Because he says, disobedience is as iniquity as witchcraft. Yes. Rebellion to God is as iniquity as witchcraft. This is the same thing as witches. What a tragedy for somebody to appear in heaven. They say, you can't enter this place. I say, ah, why can't I enter? I say, because you're a witch. I say, I don't drink blood. I say, you're a witch. So, you become his friend when you practice 100% obedience. Me? You must make that 100%. Oh. 99 and half percent will not do. This is where people don't become the friend of God. Oh, Abraham no. was ready to sacrifice Isaac because he got an instruction from God. Oh, the no. son wow. that he prayed for so many years to get is that obedient. Yeah. So when God wanted to destroy Sodom and Gomorrah, mm. he went to Abraham. Oh, to Abraham so, no. I want to destroy that place. Mm. But, but you are my friend. Okay. I don't think... I should do that kind of thing without telling you. Yes. Abraham remember quickly that his, uh, his brother was there with wife and children and he began to negotiate. It's only a friend you can talk to like that. I said, I said, God, what? But you can't destroy the righteous with the evil one now. Oh, far, far, far be it from you. You are not like that. Yes. See, perhaps you find 50 people. Oh, Sodom and Gomorrah. For the sake of 50, I will leave them in It's okay. He said, I'm sorry, sir. I'm sorry. How about 45? So for the sake of 45, I'll, I'll let the place go. I won't destroy it. Say, I'm sorry that I'm talking like this. How about 40? So for 40, I will leave them alone. But Abraham knew that he was going to 10. He had calculated in his head. Lot is there. His wife is there. He has daughters, three daughters, together with their husbands. You add all those things together, ten should be okay. One did not know that uh, there are people that the, the people will not listen. But God still listened to him. So once the calculation of time failed, God drained fire and brings someone Sodom and Gomorrah. And, it's, and when the angel was rescued, he said, don't look back behind you. If you look back behind you, they'll be destroyed. They'll be said, Lord's wife looked back and became a pillar of salt. God said, don't look back. But Abraham, God's friend, he stood and was watching the thing like this. God said, they should not look. Will you be a friend of Jesus? Our various languages we knew. They know the value of being gospel. And therefore it found its way into so many songs we sing. There's an English song that says, There is not a friend like the Lord Jesus. Not one. No, not one. None else could hear. 
diseases. No, not one. No, not one. Jesus, no, all I have are struggles. He will guide till that day is gone. There is no other prayer like that. Jesus, no, 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 See, people who talk in Ibo, they will say, I didn't know, I didn't know, oh man, I didn't know, any career in Jesus, I said, no, no friend like Jesus. The choir band will say, I'm a male, I'm a male, I'm a young man. Am I me or born Jesus? Am I young? Because they know he's our friend. Or I be Jesus Kosi. There is no friend like Jesus. Jesus alone is a true friend. Ah, the ye friends of Jesus may forsake you. Shuba Jesus. Hallelujah. Amen. When you approach God number two, you approach him as a father. You all know the Lord's prayer. Our father. Who art in heaven. Hallowed. Be thy name. You approach him as a father. And no father wants his children to suffer. He says, how can you ask your father for food and he gives you snakes or bad things? Second prayer approaches as a father. The third prayer approach. You approach God as a creator. In John chapter 1. John chapter 1. In the beginning was the word. And the word was with God. And the word was God. The same was in the beginning with God. All things were made by him. And without him was not anything made that was made. All things were made by him. The Bible says, in the beginning, God created. You approach him as a creator yeah. in prayer. Four, you approach him as a warrior deliverer. That's the fourth approach. Warrior deliverer. Like David approached him in Psalm 35. So warrior deliverer. Psalm 35. Plead my cause, O Lord, with them that strive with me. Fight against them that fight against me. Take hold of shield and buckle. Stand up for my help. Draw out also the spear and stop the way against them that persecute me. Say unto my soul, I'm thy salvation. Let them be confounded and put to shame that seek after my soul. Let them be turned back and brought to confusion that divides my heart. Let them be as chaff before the wind. Let the angel of the Lord chase them. I'm praying for somebody here. Beginning from this morning, the warrior angels of God will begin to chase your enemies relentlessly in the name of Jesus. So approach him like that. He has said, the Lord is a man of war. The Lord is his name. And he's called the Lord of hosts. That is warfare way of approaching him. Five. You can approach him as a shepherd, as written in Psalm 23, which I'm sure we all know. The Lord is my shepherd. I shall not want. Approach him in prayer as a shepherd. Six, you approach him as a healer. In Exodus 15, verse 26. Exodus 15, 26. And he said, if thou will diligently hearken to the voice of the Lord thy God, and will do that which is right in his sight, and will give ear to his commandments, and keep all his statutes, I will put none of these diseases upon thee, which are brought upon the Egyptians, for I am the Lord that healeth thee, as a healer. Seven, we approach him as a savior. Savior. In Isaiah 12, verse 2, Behold, 
God is my salvation. I will trust and not be afraid. For the Lord Jehovah is my strength and my song. He also is become my salvation. You approach him as a savior. Crying upon him to save you as a savior. Finally, you approach him as a judge. This is where we are going. You approach him as a judge. In Luke chapter 18, I read from verse 1. Luke 18, verse 1. 1. You approach him as a friend. 2. As a father. 3. As a creator. 4. As a warrior deliverer. 5. As a shepherd. 6. As healer. 7. As savior. And 8. As judge. In case you didn't get that very well. In Luke chapter 18. Then he spoke a parable unto them. To this end. That men ought always to pray and not to faint. Oh, Saying there was in the city a judge, oh. which fell not God neither regarded man. And there was a widow in that city, and she came unto him saying, oh. Avenge me of my adversary. Best. And he would not for a while. But afterward he said within himself, oh, I fear not God nor regard man. Yes, yeah, because his widow oh, will bless me, you. will avenge her. Lest by continual coming she worry me. Yeah. And the Lord said, Hear yeah, what this unjust judge said. Him. And he said, And shall not God avenge his own elect, All which cry them. day and night unto him, though he be along with them? Oh. I tell you oh. that we will avenge them speedily. Yo. So the eight approaches God as a judge. Therefore, beloved, yeah. there is something oh. known, oh. known as a court of the Almighty. Yeah. Oh. God is a judge in a courtroom. Let's go back to the book of 1 Kings, chapter 22. 1 Kings 22 gives you a small idea of what happens at the throne of God. A small idea. Ahab had offended God and his case was tabled at the court of heaven. His case came to that place and a decision was taken. I was found guilty and a decision was taken. First Kings 22, look at verse 19. And he said, Hear thou therefore the word of the Lord. I saw the Lord sitting on his throne and all the hosts of heaven standing by him on his right hand and on his left. And the Lord said, Who shall persuade Ahab that he may go up and fall at Ramot Gilead. The decision against Ahab was taken in heaven that he must fall at Ramot Gilead. He had already been found guilty and the, the, the thing is that he must die in that place. That's the judgment. Now they now started planning how to get that to happen. Verse 21. Verse 20. And the Lord said, Who shall persuade Ahab that he may go up and fall at Ramot Gilead? And one said on this manner, another said on that manner. That is, all those priests were saying, that, My Lord, let's do it like this. Let's do it like that. And there came forth a spirit and stood before the Lord and said, I will persuade him. One of those around that throne. And the Lord said unto him, Where with? How are you going to do it? And he said, I will go forth. I will be a lying spirit in the mouth of all his prophets. And God said, Thou shalt persuade him and prevail also. Go forth and do so. So the spirit went, put lies in the mouth of the prophets who were saying, go, go, go. Whereas it's a lying spirit. This is why many of us have to be careful. Those of you who jump about prayer houses like mosquitoes, Baba pray for me. Mama pray for me. This pray for me. That pray for me. So your head, your symbol of destiny that they had no access to. They lay hands on it for you. The problem starts. And the problem has started now. It's aggravated. Run to press it for deliverance. Thinking that God is a joker. It means that there could be lying spirits in the mouth of the prophets you are going to consult. And they will specifically give you wrong information to make the person fail. Those of you who are running from mountain to mountain. Better sit down and develop your spiritual life. Develop your spiritual life. Read your Bible. Pray for yourself. Attend Bible studies. Spend some the schools. MFM has the largest number of schools of all churches in the whole world. And it's not only for pastors. Any, any believer who wants to improve your spiritual life, you can say, I want to climb higher. You register for the school of prayer, for the school of deliverance, for the school of Bible school studies. You have to be a pastor to go and register for those schools. You want to upgrade your spiritual life. That's why you see them announcing those schools openly. So you won't say you didn't know. So don't say it's for pastors. No, it's for everybody. So upgrade your spiritual life. Don't use that facility. Coming to my 
talking of fire, you have facilities you are not using. Hey, you are no. carrying your golden anointed head all over the place, from this mountain to that mountain to that mountain. By the time they capture all the virtues in your head, you run back to press city to cry, and the Lord will say, who asked you to go there? Some of, some of those prophets have even become so daring now. They even come to church. After service, I see this. Because you are a baby Christian, you refuse to grow. You are scared. You say, I want to say, prophet, I don't know who you are. This is your prophecy. Back to the sender. Not my Lord. You, did, you couldn't say that. You are scared. A lot of people are just wasting their money on these prophets. <laughs> you are buying candy. May God not allow them to candy your life. You are buying good. Good. Why is that in the Bible? What kind of thing is this? You are you an able-bodied woman. You are following a prophet to a river for bathing. And the prophet is putting sponge in soap and is washing the whole of your body everywhere. There is only one something wrong with you. That thing I used to tell them in youth church. Your head. It's not correct. And this is a serious situation. There you see, 400 prophets. 400. The gods are about you. But it's all lies. Only one prophet was telling the truth. They locked him up. And as they were locking him up, say, King, if you come back from this battle, God has not spoken by me. The king said, take him away. Feed him with bread and water of affliction till I come back. The king never came back. And the person who killed him did not fire arrow at him. He just fired it into the air like that, maybe to waste the arrow, to give the impression that he came to fight. And the arrow went straight inside the chariot of the man, entered his heart, as said by the true prophet of God. I'm praying for somebody here. Now, may you not miss your road. May you not be confused. You will not have any problem that will drive you to false prophets. In the name of Jesus. Let that amen rule like thunder. So you can see from this passage that God has a courtroom. But that's not the only scripture. Let's look at a bit more scripture to confirm that God has a court. Psalm 9, verse 4. Psalm 9, verse 4. For thou hast maintained my right and my cause. Thou sittest in throne, judging right. He seated on the throne, judging right. Then verse 7. But the Lord shall endure forever. He hath prepared his throne for judgment. There it is, you see it. In Isaiah chapter 41, verse 21. Isaiah 41, 21. Produce your cause, said the Lord. Bring your case. Produce your cause. Bring forth your strong reasons, said the king of Jacob. So that, that is, you can approach that court. You bring forth your cause. Yep. Lord, I am here. Hey. I didn't do anything to this person. I didn't offend this person. Me. Look at what the person is doing. Me. Me. Therefore, you must bring judgment against this person. Me. Against that power. For this reason, treason, this reason, this reason. That's what he's talking about. Oh. Produce your cause. Oh. Say the Lord. Bring forth your strong reasons. Hey. Just hey. as you will bring evidence in court. Bring hey. your, let's have your strong reasons. Okay? Oh, you want me to fight for you? Why? Why should I fight for you? Oh, so, yeah. ah, Father, if you don't fight for me, unbelievers will laugh at me and say, but you are my God. You are brought for a reason. Oh, wow. Say, so, Father, if you don't fight for me, oh, really? I won't have money to do your work. Oh, you yeah. are bringing strong reasons. Oh, wow. Plead your cause. Bring strong reasons. Oh, yeah. All this happened in the altar of prayer. Oh, altar of prayer. Me when too, you yeah. come to recognize God as a judge. Yeah. God is a judge. He has cut room. Oh. I want you to understand this very well. There is a courtroom of God in heaven. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Befalls any enemy that you drag to that court. Whoa. Why did I say that? Because they will become enemies of themselves when you drag them there. They will fight and be opposing themselves. That's why they are fighting themselves. They will sink in the Red Sea after the order of Pharaoh okay. when you drag them to that country. They will be destroyed by the angels of God after the order of Sennacherib. Okay. And the angel destroyed over 180,000 of Sennacherib soldiers one night when you drag Nepa. them to that country. Okay. All the witches, the wizards, uh, the occultic people uh, try so hard. Uh, Christians don't understand these mysteries. They understand it. Because when you understand it and you begin your dragging, yeah. you know they're in trouble. Because they will drag them from their coven to that judgment seat. And the lawyers of them will ask them why they are attacking this person from their coven. What has the person done? And they give out their judgment. Once someone gives out judgment, it's given. 
given. That's what the Bible says. See, because sentence That's against God. an evil work is not suddenly done. Say the heart of man is hardened to do evil. Some judgment have been pronounced against them. But God observes. Will they repent? Change their ways? Hold oh, something a little bit. Something a little bit. Judgment has already been issued. Because that sentence, because God is a God of mercy, that sentence is not suddenly ex executed. Some, some enemies think nothing will happen. <laughs> Once you are dragged to the court of heaven, something will happen. They when you know. drag them there, they will, restore the stone, they will receive the stones of fire after the order of Goliath. They what ask. David did was to drag Goliath to that court. Holy. And say, ooh, ooh, is this uncircumcised Philistine? Who is this person? Who? Ha! Ah. What kind of insult is this? Who is this uncircumcised Philistine? That he may defy. The armies of the living God. Oh. He had filed this case. Oh. Say, so, Father, I drag this man to your court. Oh, Define the armies of the living oh, God. God. Will you keep quiet? Yeah. Watch this fellow. Oh, Will keep he... quiet? That's what David technically did, but many believers don't understand. Oh. Drag him to that court. Oh, when you drag some people to that court, yeah. their ways will become very cloudy and slippery. Uh, they will receive compulsory and forceful barrier like Kora, Data, and Abiram, which is what Moses did to Kora, Data, and Abiram. Yeah. Father, look at these people. They are insulting your prophet. I might have made mistakes, but it's not in their mouth to be talking about it. And God agreed with Moses. For this reason, I would always advise members of Mountain of Fire Miracles Ministry don't ever. Put your mouth in anybody criticizing any man of God. Don't put your mouth. It is his master who will deal with him, not you. You don't go and start fighting God's battle. You are fighting for God. No, God is enough to fight his battle. Don't fight foolish battle. Yes. Anytime you see people maligning, insulting men of God, don't get involved. If they send it to your phone, don't forward it to anybody. To, to worsen the destruction of this generation. This generation has become a generation where People who were not born when a man starts a ministry is abusing him for not knowing what to do. Some that if not the pastor that pray for his mommy, he will not even be delivered. He's now born and is now talking against people who started ministry before he was born. It is a device of the devil to destroy the generation. Because the Bible says, touch not my anointed, my prophets no harm. But because sentence against an evil work is not quickly suddenly done. They continue to do it. I did it. Nothing happened to me. Nothing. Nothing is happening to me. Hey, nothing is happening. The sentence is issued. Yes, hanging on the head like this. When it will fall, no pastor can deliver this. When the judgment fall, nobody can deliver them. I know some pastors, they came to me here, seven of them, they were walking under an overseer and they insulted him. They said all kinds of things against him and he dragged them to heaven. As of the time they came to see me, none of them had gone to the toilet for three weeks. The man did not say a word. So then I came to me. So, Dr. Luka, we annoyed our overseer. And we think he might have issued a curse against us. Please, use your higher anointing. Cancel what he did to us. So that we can be going to the toilet. As they were speaking to me, saliva was coming out of their mouth. And mucus was coming out of their eyes. And I think I now was in their case. So, I'm sorry. I don't pray that kind of prayer. Go back to the man. Go and apologize and beg him. If you go there first time, he says, no. Drag your wife and your children and go and beg. They say, you mean you will not pray? I'm sorry. I can't pray. They all shouted in Yoruba that, Agbo! So, go and see over there. Anyone dragged to that court is seeking to be pursued by terrifying noises. You'll be hearing noises. They won't know where the noises are coming from. God will, by that noise, render the diviners mad. It wasn't me that wrote it in the Bible. It's there. So when you hear MFM praying, any witch doctor conjuring things against my name, run mad and die. It's in the Bible. I didn't write it. It said he renders their diviners mad. May any diviner against you run mad in the name of Jesus. They must run mad. They must run mad. They must run mad. In the name of Jesus. A servant for the man. Any power dragged to that court is seeking to be eaten by spiritual worms. Like the worms ate 
Herod. They are, they are looking for bombardment of bad luck. They are seeking to become a prey of eaters of flesh and drinkers of blood. Wow. They will eventually become landlord in the valley of defeat. They will get a sea of hole for occupation in the desert. They invite sorrow wow. to their lives when you drag them to that country. Hey. This is a style of prayer many believers don't know, don't understand. And by that, the Bible says, my people perish for lack of knowledge. They just did not know, lack of knowledge. That strange woman, if you drag her to that court, say, Father, I was the one that paid the school fees of this man when he was in school. It's the one who did this, who did that. I don't know where this woman came from. I'm dragging this woman to your court now. You oh, must issue judgment against her. Judgment against her. You'll be amazed at what will happen. So the final, the supreme an absolute judge over all creation is God Almighty. So one powerful weapon of spiritual warfare is to drag the enemy to the court. A time will certainly arise in your life. If it has not arrived now, you have to go to this courtroom and bring cases to God and have him judge your case. Job, Job ran to the court of the Almighty. He came to the courtroom that God should render judgment between his friends and Satan. When God raised judgment, Job had to pray for his friend for the judgment to, to subside. In Job chapter 23, verse 2. Job 23, verse 2. Oh, even today is my complaint bitter. My stroke is heavier than my groaning. Oh, that I knew where I might find him. That I might come even to his seat. I will order my cause before him and fill my mouth with arguments. I will know the words which he will answer me and understand what he will say unto me. You can read the rest of that chapter at all. Problem started with Job's friends. Job had to pray for them. In the Luke 18 that we just we read, it presents God as a judge. Avenge me of my adversaries. Avenge me of my adversaries. Avenge me of my adversaries. Read the Bible well, beloved. You yeah. see how many times the psalmist made reference to God as a judge. As a judge. Lawyers who are here will tell you, don't go before any judge in the courtroom in a disorganized state. Don't go before a judge and say, I'm, I'm here because uh, somebody fired arrows at me. And then judge too, I'm hungry. Judge, I have to pay school fees. Judge, my rent is due. You don't go, to, you don't go there in a disorganized state like that. The Bible said, line upon line, precept upon precept. Many people are facing one battle. Two battles, three, four, five. Some people are fighting at ten different battlefronts. But if you don't have a very good prophet and you cannot discern by the Holy Spirit, you will think, you will think it's just one battle. There is many battles in spiritual war. You don't lump all the battles together like that. Take them one at a time. There is a person. Your father is a native doctor. Battle number one. Your mother is a marine agent. But number two, then when you were born too, they initiated you unconsciously. But number three, you want to marry now. You marry into a strong family where they don't want anybody to prosper. Another battle. Go to the place of work. There's envious witchcraft. Another battle. Unless you sit down, take them one by one. That's how to present it. Take the first battle, which is the foundational one. Deal with it. Deal with it until you know that is resolved. Then you go to the next one. The Bible says if the, if the foundation be destroyed, what can the righteous do? Somebody has said the righteous will be crying for sorrow. If he doesn't go and revisit that foundation, then after finishing that one, then you go to your mother's side. Yeah. Finish with that one. Go to this envious witchcraft. How to present your case. There is nothing like general prayer when it comes to spiritual war. And if you must get a hearing from heaven, there are steps you must take. Steps you must take. Number one, you want to be heard in the court of heaven? You want to drag cases down? You want judgment? One, ensure that your life is fully yielded unto the Lord. Fully yielded unto the Lord. Two, give up all your sins. Give up all your sins. Three, carry out a thorough cleansing of your life we are to ensure that Satan has no legal claim. Thorough cleansing that of your that life. That to ensure that Satan has no legal claim. Somebody wanted to worship an idol somewhere in the Asian country. Everybody was contributing money to the idol. She doesn't have money to contribute. So she decided to scrape a long hair and, and use it as an offering to the idols. Then the priest of the idols, they sell off 
this year, transport them to Africa. And you, you, I want to be fine. Now put it on your head. I want to be fine. I don't know who you want to please. Is it your destiny? Who do you want to please? You put these strange materials on your head, which is your symbol of glory. Destiny. Each time you put it on, you reinforce the enemies against you. And this is why you hear me announcing, you are, if you are coming for weekend deliverance, dress properly. No wigs, no attachments. You don't know where those things have come from. Some have been taken from corpses and they are selling it. And now you put it on. You say you are fine. You are not fine at all. Not at all. What's happening is that your face may be beautiful and fine. Your brain is so ugly than anything. So if you don't cleanse your life thoroughly. The yeah, devil yeah. has a legal claim. Now you now go to court. Say, hey, Father, I'm dragging these people here into this court. They too will talk. Oh, they will talk. I say, but uh, she's wearing our material. Oh, yeah. Our property is on her head. Oh, okay. She's benefiting from us. You cannot bring us here. Oh. And ensure that Satan has no legal ground. Hey. You have been born again for years. Why are you keeping materials from your former sugar daddy and former boyfriend? Oh, ah, it's a phone, sir. It's a phone. It's hey, very expensive. Is so it's a phone more expensive than your destiny. Yes. It's better for you to be phoneless and get your destiny in order. Okay. Ensure Satan has no legal claim hey, upon your life. Hey. Four. You need to organize your petition in a logical manner. You may need a pen and a paper. First of all, list what they are doing to you. The way you are going to tell God, then you give reasons why judgment must be given against them. One way to do that very well is to write this thing down and present the paper before God. Five, you come to that courtroom by the blood of Jesus. That blood that gives you access to the place. Six, request to come into that courtroom and request for a hearing before the judge of the whole earth. But if you don't bring any case to him, what case will he judge? I just bring general, general prayers. And seven, to ask the Holy Spirit to help your case and give you words, give you information, give you groanings that cannot be uttered to be able to present your case. I'm praying for somebody here. That may you not miss your road. May you not be confused. You will not have any problem that will drive you to false prophets. In the name of Jesus. Let that amen rule like thunder.